Combat kicks number five. Now for our next move, we're going to be doing an oblique kick. An oblique kick is possibly the simplest kick a person can do. You're basically picking your knee up and stepping into the opponent's kneecap, kind of like you're kicking a soccer ball. I want you to always practice this with your right and left. Always look in front of the mirror and picture an opponent in front of you. Have your hands up, picture a boxer in front of you throwing a jab out. You're just basically covering that, boom, just stepping right into the kneecap. When you have a person in front of you, Rich, what I want you to do is I want you to work on your person's knee. I want him to keep his knee bent a little bit to protect his knee. In lieu of going on the kneecap, I want you to go underneath the knee exactly on the shin for training. And just do this over and over again until you get the feel of the actual target that you're going for. And then once you get comfortable with that, let your opponent throw out a few slow jabs at you. And the second the jab comes out, simultaneously you hit the knee. So it's just boom. Just get used to boom, just doing that over and over again. Or the opponent could grab you. Anytime he grabs you again, instead of trying some do stupid, difficult technique, I want you to just boom, walk right through the knee. That will end it much quicker, and it's much easier to do. You have the time to train. You don't have the time to spend three hours working on it. So you can just work your oblique in the mirror a few times. Hey, Jimbo here. Got an awesome free giveaway for the first 200 guys, the TRS Buccaneer. Extra tough, shockingly easy to swing machete that delivers more devastating chopping power than an ax. This is 20 inches of mind-boggling hacking power inspired by the classic 1917 U.S. Navy Cutlass. And right now, with your permission, I will rush you this amazing machete for free. Just pay shipping and handling, and it's on its way to your front door. There are only 200 available for this free offer. So get to the link in the description now if you want one. Combat kicks number four. Most guys are doing this. You see it all the time. They block this way. And again, this is a very rudimentary, basic learning step to deal with that kick. But that will get you hurt. Two things can happen here. First of all, he can hurt my leg severely. Okay? And this is, everybody learns this. Everybody thinks this is how you block the tie kick. He's going he's gonna to kill my shin if I do this. But more importantly, look what's going to happen. If I throw a kick against this guy and he blocks that way, again, remember, I just got done telling you, we're going to always try to throw him in twos at least. Here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to kick. I, aha. I see what he's doing. You see that block? I said, I got him. The first kick here, I immediately step back and then right to here. Once again. I kick, he blocks, I'm down immediately, I got him there. Now if I'm throwing this hard and fast, he's almost always going to go to the ground. And sometimes with a severe knee or, or, or lower leg injury. Now I don't have to necessarily cut underneath. What I can also do, if I just kick right to here, I can kick that right through to there. Okay, it's a very simple technique. So you can see what's going to happen against somebody that knows what he's doing. You're going to get hurt if you try to use this block which is the classic tie boxing block. I'm going to show you a better way and a, and, a be and a simpler way. When he gets ready to throw that kick, remember I talked about leaning out? Virtually all the power in this kick comes from body rotation. So it stands to reason then that if I stop his body rotation, the kick loses an awful lot of power. So here's what it looks like. I'm still going to do this, but instead of just turning this out, I'm going to turn it slightly in. So here's what it looks like. This is the traditional karate guy or kickboxing guy or even some Thai boxers. They block this way. They point the knee out. Uh-uh. I'm going to point the knee more at a 45 degree angle straight in. At the same time, I'm going to lean him out and I'm going to be moving into the kick as I do all those things. Here's what it looks like. Boom. He has almost no chance of throwing a double kick at me because A, I've stopped his rotation and B, I forced him backwards. When he's got one leg up and one leg down, it doesn't take a lot of power to knock him off balance. I don't have to be big and strong. Here, you see? Once again, this is how you block this kick, moving in. Moving in, the knee's at a slight angle. Most importantly, I'm leaning him out. Second notice about this awesome giveaway I'm conducting for the first 200 guys who respond Get to the link in the description and I will now rush you this stunning Buccaneer machete for free. Just pay shipping and handling and it's on its way to your front door. This is a $90 machete, 20 inches long, cutlery grade steel. The handle is solid steel covered with an attractive high impact glass reinforced nylon. 
total quality. And the hard shell sheath is specially designed for a fast abbreviated draw. It's out and ready in a flash. There's a strict limit of 200 to go around, so get to the link in the description now. Combat kicks number three. Uh, before I uh, show to you the last two uh, uh, low kicking techniques that I'm gonna do this afternoon, uh, I'm gonna describe to you one of the misconceptions and uh, explain to you what the, the problems are with kicking in general for combat use. Uh, I've spent many years just perfecting some high kicking techniques. Uh, that was by my choice, not because I chose to uh, 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 use these techniques because I was gonna spend whatever time required so I could use them in combat. I used them as more of an art form and exercise, but some of these techniques can take you three or four months of practicing two or three hundred times a day each kick just to learn the technique good enough so you might be able to use it in combat. And then you go finding out that the, the practical nature of these kicks is so seldom presents itself in a close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat in real life that the amount of time you have invested in learning these techniques is nowhere near represents the value that you would want them to represent from the time you have invested if your intention is to survive a violent street confrontation or to make efficient use of your time to learn some some techniques uh, to protect yourself. Uh, I'll just demonstrate a couple of techniques. Uh, all, everything we're showing you in the kicking department is all low kicks, requires no flexibility, doesn't require a lot of balance, speed, or anything. Uh, and they, they can be learned in one or two days. It's not a problem. These kinds of kicks with multiple kicks and kicks like this and over and side kicks, everything high and to the face and spin kicks like this is actually useless because these kind of things, especially this spin kick, uh, a person may have to practice 10, 12, 14 months straight, uh, at least five or six days a week. Uh, let's say, be realistic, 10 or 15,000 repetitions before you get good enough to use these things in a combat sequence. So that's why we're not gonna show you any of these other than to demonstrate it's possible. You can get real good at them. Uh, you have to have flexibility. You have to have extensive time uh, invested in training, and their practical value to you in a street survival situation is not even close to the amount of time you have to invest. Okay, the next technique I'm going to show you is uh, based on a little uh, anatomical, uh, if you can stick your leg out a little bit, yeah, and put the weight on it. Okay, this this kick is going to attack <clears throat> this shin bone that runs on the leg, ankle to the knee here. This shin bone, you view it in this manner. It's two inches wide and one inch thick. Two inches wide this way and one inch deep. When you have the weight of the person, let's say 60, 70 percent of the body weight of the person placed upon this leg, if you assault this bone from this bone is like this, two inches wide and one inch deep here. So the, this part coming against here is only one inch deep. And with the weight placed on it, it takes four to six pounds of pressure to snap that bone. Okay, so I'm going to show you if you're having, <coughs> uh, when the range of a confrontation approaches the grappling stage where you're this close, this is very easy. If they're leaning on you, or, or let's say your balance position is equal and they want to come forward, if you lean more weight onto their leg and just kick like that with the bottom of your shoe, you have a very good chance of breaking that shin bone because they are helping you by putting the weight on the on the this uh, thin uh, piece of bone there. If you strike it from this way, they have two inches. It's a two by one in effect from this way, and you're not going to get any results. It's partially covered by a muscle, and it has you're attacking its strong point. Kicking this way attacks the weak point, makes a break easily possible. Okay. Combat kicks number two. The next subject would be kicking and counter kicking. You can apply the same principle that we have in the wedge going forward within the shortest distance between two points to the legs as well. Okay? For this, we use a technique which is uh, 
simply a straight front kick going to the abdomen or to the thigh or to the knee of the partner. So let's just say he wants to attack me with a straight kick and I just stop him right away by applying a stop kick. If he comes in with a low kick, I'm gonna do the same thing. If he gives me a high kick to the head, I'm gonna do the same thing. If he comes in with a spinning back kick, I do the same thing as well, okay? If he jumps in with a side kick, for instance, let's just repeat it for you so that you can see it again. Final chance at getting the free Buccaneer machete. This is a $90 machete. It's 24 inches long, specially designed, hard shell sheath, makes it one of the fastest drawing machetes in the world. Best part, it's yours for free. Just pay shipping and handling to get this to your front door and I'll rush one out to you right away. I started with only 200. There are still some left, so get to the link in the description while you can. I'll see you over there. Combat kicks number one. Now here's a pretty cool combo to try. It's an eye flick followed by a downward side kick. So the first move basically is to blind your opponent and the follow-up blow is to break his kneecap. So you're blinding him and then possibly crippling him. Quick announcement, I've got some brutal fight ending moves. They're pretty ugly, but you're gonna wanna know these. It's yours for free from the link in the description below. Okay, back to our video. All right, so the move are both delivered from the parathesis stance, all right? So we're pretty much closing our groin, covering it with our lead leg, lead knee. We're stepping in, flicking at the eye. Now, we may not hit the eye, but basically what we're trying to do is to get our opponent to step back. So this aggressive motion has a purpose, and it's to force the man to take a slight step backward, okay? So once he does that, I'm now at long distance. Now I can't reach him with my eye flick. I'm not gonna certainly jump at him, but I can reach him with my longest weapon, which is a side kick to the kneecap. So I simply move in, bang his knee. All right, now let's take a look at that again. Let's break it down step by step. Really a simple combination but it's predicated on what your opponent is gonna do. Now obviously, if he doesn't go for the eye flick or he runs into it, and then you try to follow up a kick and he hasn't stepped back, of course you're gonna get jammed. So your kick really is gonna be useless. You're gonna to have to follow up with another technique. But that's okay, because you've got enough to techniques at your disposal. But let's say he does step back. Let's say this move falls short of the target but it does force him to retreat. You better be ready to follow up. So here we go, the flick, he steps back, I move in right away, and I strike his knee. All right? Absolutely. Thank you. You wanna make sure you're all right. All right, once again, I'm moving, all right? I'm gonna start out with this finger flick, he's gonna step back, and then I'm gonna move in, sliding in, and I'm gonna stomp on that knee. I'm gonna bring my leg up and stomp down as hard as I can with the heel of the whole flat of the foot. My objective, go through the target. I aim here, but actually, I focus all the way through, several inches behind the target. Eye flick, move in, side kick to the knee. All right, now let's try this with uh, the condition or the uh, situation where he doesn't move back. All right, so I'm gonna step in, I flick, and I land. What I may be able to do is still use the side kick, but instead of getting a slide and full extension of my leg, I may just slightly step in, raise my foot up high, and then simply stomp down on his knee to break his kneecap. All right, so it's a versatile technique. Of course, the most um, effective use of this combination is if your opponent slides back with a half step. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.